Good morning. My name is Father Michael Cusato. I'm a Franciscan friar here at the Franciscan Monastery in Washington, D.C. On the 2nd of August, the Franciscan family celebrates the Feast of the Portiuncula. This morning I'd like to address two questions, very simple questions. First, what is this Portiuncula? And secondly, what is it we celebrate in this feast? As to the first question, the Portiuncula is a tiny chapel located in central Italy, out below the city of Assisi on a great plain in front of the city. We see here actually a replica, a modern replica of that same chapel here in Washington. Uh, it's, um, it's a beautiful little structure and it's quite actually consistent with what you would see in Assisi today. It exists today and it is actually a small chapel that has been engulfed by an early 17th century uh, Baroque structure known as the Church of St. Mary of the Angels, which is actually the seventh largest church in all of Christendom. The Portiuncula figures into four key events in early Franciscan history. First, it is a ch one of the three chapels that St. Francis decided to rebuild with his own hands uh, in the area of Assisi during the early years of his conversion. The chapel actually belonged to the Benedictines of the monastery of Mount Sobasio, which was up north or up above the hills of Assisi. And it was called St. Mary of the Angels. This, uh, this church, this little chapel, which Francis recreated by rebuilding it, becomes a center focus for the early movement because it was a place where the friars could actually stay and sleep as they went throughout the Spoleto Valley preaching. Secondly, in 1209, Pope Innocent III, after Pope Innocent had approved the early friars' rule of life, uh, the friars decided they needed a center point for their movement, which was burgeoning. And they chose this chapel of the Portiuncula as their centerpiece. It was a place where the friars could gather for their chapters. And it was also a point of commissioning outward as the friars went in mission throughout the world. They figured that this was there without owning or possessing this place. They considered it, as they called it, our little portion here on earth, our Portiuncula. That's where the name comes from. But it became really the center of the movement. And because of that, thirdly, it was the place where Claire, in, uh, on the uh, midnight or in the evening of uh, Palm Sunday 1212, where she fled to in order to join herself to this movement of early friars. And fourthly, lastly, the Portiuncula was also the place where Francis wished to die, and in fact did die, at the end of his life on the 3rd of October, 1226. As an interesting historical side point, this little chapel becomes a point of contention within the order after the death of Francis, as the papacy moved the center of the movement up the hill outside of the town of Assisi to the great Basilica of San Francesco, which was built in his honor, and the Sacro Convento, which was to house first the papacy and eventually the friars. But a lot of the friars preferred this simple structure as representative of holy poverty. But the feast of the Portiuncula actually celebrates something rather differently on August the 2nd. It celebrates the granting of a plenary indulgence the Portiuncula indulgence to anyone who would enter on this particular day into this chapel in a perfect state of grace. But the, the origins of this indulgence are a little bit shrouded in mystery because no document whatsoever mentions it before the late 1260s, 50 years after the time of Francis. It rests rather on popular tradition. And that tradition says the following, that in 1216, sometime after July, Francis and Brother Maceo crossed the valley from Assisi to Perugia to ask the new Pope, Honorius III, for this indulgence on behalf of the Christian people. The question is, why? What did Francis intend by this indulgence? One could simply say he was offering the Christian people another extraordinary means of grace for their lives. Fair enough. But I think there's another story here, and the story is this. Recall that in November of 1215, the previous Pope, Innocent III, had launched the Fifth Crusade, a new crusade 
to retake the holy places in the Holy Land from the Muslims. Francis, I believe, was opposed to this military venture because it was going to mean the deaths of countless Christians and countless Muslims in the process. And so I believe he goes to the Pope to ask for this indulgence so that instead of the people, the Christian people, going across the sea to obtain the plenary indulgence in a crusade, they could remain rather in Italy, enter the church in a perfect state of grace to receive the indulgence. The question is, how do you do this? You must be in a state of grace. Francis created this indulgence in order to urge the Christian people to, as he would like to say, do penance. Doing penance for him meant to confess one's sins and then to turn one's life completely over to the authentic living out of the values of Jesus and the gospel. If you do this, you will be in a state of grace. You will renew your life and you will be able to go forward. Honorius III agreed with him, gave him the indulgence, and then several centuries later, extended that indulgence, did the papacy, to anyone across the world who would enter into any Franciscan church in a state of grace.